Dragon Ball Super Chapter 84, bait and switch us faster than a used car salesman would a soccer mom trying to make his commission. How's it going everybody? Stavi G to saying what is good to all my fellow Super Saiyans, and today we are finally back to talk about another Dragon Ball Super Chapter. Like many of the other chapters in this arc, it seems as though once again we have been met with a bit of a controversial chapter. So be sure to civilly let us know down below what you thought about the chapter as a whole, and whether or not you enjoyed it. Personally, I found this chapter to be a bit of a mixed bag. Jumping right into things, the chapter begins with the conclusion of Bardock's flashback, as well as the fact that the wish he had made for Goku and Raditz to grow and thrive did in fact come true. As of right now, it's tough to say the implications this has on the series definitively, however, they could be fairly drastic. One of the biggest problems with Bardock's wish is just how vague it is, and as of right now, without any words from Toriyama or Toyotaro themselves, it's tough to determine how much this wish actually affected Goku and Raditz. On the one hand, this could simply mean that the wish was enough for them to survive Frieza destroying planet Vegeta, and that's it, while on the other hand, this could mean that all of Goku's feats as a kid in the original series would be diminished since the wish gave him a level of plot armor to survive until he at least grew up. What makes determining this so hard isn't just how vague the wish is though, but also the translations we received. The Viz translations we got are, I'd wish that my sons end up thriving, however, when translated by Herms, one of the most respected translators in the Dragon Ball community, the wish can be interpreted as, I wish for my sons to become big strong men. When it comes to the text that we get from the Viz translations, they're not always 100% with what was said in the original Japanese, but rather they translate them in such a way that they believe is more digestible to a western audience, hence why Vegito is known as Veggie Rot in the Viz manga translations. Though at the end of the day, this is all still up for interpretation and awaits further clarification from the series creators, having a plot point with such drastic implications behind it set in stone was not a great start to the chapter for me. On top of this, we have Goku and Vegeta's comments on how they finally understand their Saiyan pride. While Goku's become more in touch with his Saiyan heritage over the years, to say that he's just now finally realizing what Saiyan pride is doesn't make much sense given the Namek and even the Buu saga. We then have Vegeta who comments how he can't believe it took Goku's father for him to realize that his weight to bear is not the sins of the Saiyans, but rather their pride. As if his training with Beerus didn't happen just a few chapters ago. Plus, how are you going to tease us with magic materialization and new Saiyan armor for Goku and Vegeta just to have it taken away from us seconds later? Like, come on Toyotaro, please! However, I don't want to spend too much time talking about just the first few pages. So getting right into the meat and potatoes of this chapter, we have Gas's return and the fight between him, Ultra Instinct Goku, and Ultra Ego Vegeta. And boy oh boy did this have me hyped. One of my main concerns over the last few chapters was despite all the parallels Toriyama and Toyotaro had been drawing between Granola and Vegeta, was that we wouldn't see Ultra Ego again in this arc. However, this fear was adequately squashed as we got to see Toyotaro show off his ever-improving art style even if he did forget Vegeta's earring in a couple of panels, but he did apologize for this, so there's no reason to harp on it. One more thing I'd really like to compliment Toyotaro on in this chapter was the effective use of visual dualities between Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct, the first example of which is the panel of them transforming. We can see Vegeta is channeling his rage and bursting with energy while Goku is standing calm and collected, ready to act as needed. Things don't stop just there though, we can see just a few panels later as they fly in to strike gas that Goku is using his fists while Vegeta goes to land the kick, and moments like these further the sense that although they were able to reach these heights because of each other, these powers that they've obtained are things that they achieved due to their own merit and are extensions of their own personal hard work, not just their Saiyan heritage. However, the appearances and dualities between Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego are the only compliments that I can really give this fight. As quite frankly, despite the awesomeness of seeing Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct side by side, Gas's character and, well, the fights in this arc as a whole have been somewhat of a letdown in my opinion. One of the recent criticisms of the Black Clover manga was how Lucifero was supposed to be the King of Hell and the strongest enemy in the series to date. And yet, the only way we would have known this was via the words of other characters rather than the actions of the character himself, as his misdeeds had no lasting repercussions whatsoever. Now, while I'm not here to talk about or critique the Black Clover manga, I do think this same mindset can be applied to Granola, Gas, and Alec. While Granola was at least able to show off his abilities against Goku and Vegeta, his powers felt unearned and ultimately ended in a stalemate with Ultra Ego Vegeta. Gas up until now has done nothing to demonstrate or earn his powers as strongest in the universe, and it seems even Maki and Oil have begun to recognize this as Gas keeps being outwitted and kept at bay by Granola and the Saiyans while Elect just keeps living like Patrick Starr going, oh, just watch, we made a wish later than Granola, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. Like, my man's Elect is smoking some good copium, like, goddamn, Chief, let, let, let me get a hit of that. 
Even though it's been a while since we've felt really insane stakes in Dragon Ball, being so far removed from civilization and knowing the Saiyan's durability plus the plot armor of Minato's healing powers makes it as though it really doesn't matter what Gas is going to do. Plus, after revealing that he used to piss himself, which I did find funny at the time, it becomes quite difficult to take him seriously as the supposed strongest. To compare Gas to the last villain that we saw in Super, Moro was able to set the tone as a strong antagonist quite early on with his planet eating and abilities to suppress Goku and Vegeta's key. This forced Vegeta to head over to Yard Rat and seek out Force Spirit Fission, and for Goku to train Ultra Instinct further with Muris. However, at this point, nothing has changed for Goku and Vegeta, and so to have them just jump back into the fray felt, well, repetitive. Speaking of being repetitive, the end of this chapter felt incredibly reminiscent of the end of chapter 74 and the beginning of chapter 75, in which Vegeta kept taking reckless damage in exchange for strength, which ended in him coughing up blood and being on the verge of blacking out. Though he's starting this battle in Ultra Ego rather than escalating things as he evaluates the opponent, to believe that Vegeta will finish things off against a supposedly stronger opponent just feels like we're getting our hopes up as Vegeta fans. But if he were to lose to Gas in a similar manner as he did to Granola, well, that would just feel like the definition of insanity. Well, at the end of the day, I did find this fight to be enjoyable, this arc is really starting to feel like it's gone on for a bit too long, and is now repeating itself. Though we know that the arc is going to be coming to a close within the near future, at this point, I just don't know what Toriyama and Toyotaro will be able to come up with that'll make the ending of this arc feel like a satisfying one. Hopefully, we'll be able to get the reverse of the Moro arc, where they'll be able to come up with something that'll stick the landing at the end of the arc after a rough start, but much like Vegeta getting a win in this fight, I'm not going to be getting my hopes too high. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, be sure to comment your thoughts on the chapter as a whole, and don't forget to keep it civil. Have a great rest of your day, peace out, and I will see you all next time.